Let's get it going on the Lockdown Royals Padres podcast crossover episode. What is this? A crossover episode? We're talking the Javier Reyes of Lockdown Padres. You can find him on Twitter at Javapeno. You can find me on Twitter at Relinger for Styles. Follow the show on Twitter at Lockdown Royals. Follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Padres. And today we're talking about spring training. Javi? How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing pretty great, despite some of the behind the scenes, uh, uh, dare I say, uh, issues that have arisen for both of us over the past couple of of hours prior to this recording. Uh, It has been a fantastic time because there's so much to talk about with baseball. And, you know, when we first started doing this weekly, dare I say, roundtable, even though it's just us two, little meetup. You know, our fireside chat, maybe I could say. Um, oh, gosh, the fireside <laughs> chat. What are we going to talk about, the banks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The stock's going down, 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 man. Um, no, uh, and we've been, we've been talking a lot about, you know, there's spring trading stuff and how it's, you know, you can't overreact to it. And now we actually have a little bit more tangible kind of news, I think. Well, what well, one, because we have the World Baseball Classic, which we're going to be talking about. And two, because both of our teams, I think, have had some at least fairly interesting developments. I know the Padres certainly have. And I'm excited to talk about that with you. And as always, to have our little fun kind of dumb skit at the end uh, where we kind of just roast ourselves because, I don't know, I just feel like we roasted Eric Hosmer last time. I think we, we owe it to people and him to roast ourselves now and make fun of ourselves a little bit. So uh, stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, thrilled to once again be talking with my guy. Hope you're doing well, too. Doing great. You know, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, I think, and talk about some guys that we, we were stupid and bought all in on them doing it up in Arizona. And then they just weren't any good at all. Uh, no offense to them. Uh, but also we'll talk WBC, but let's first start with spring training. I feel like, I feel like this year, the spring training aspect has gotten overshadowed a bit by the WBC and has gotten overshadowed a bit yeah. where like people aren't even tuning in or checking it out anymore. But there still are some very exciting things happening uh, in Surprise, Arizona and in Peoria, as I think is where the Padres are at. I could be wrong. Uh, but I want to start first by asking you this simple question. How awesome is FanDuel? Because they're bringing us today's episode, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. That's where this show is brought to you by. Now, Javi, I have a hot take, and Mm. Mm. I I get it. We want to bash baseball at every turn because, oh, the big bad corporation sucks. Uh, Blackout (laughs) suck. No, 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 that's just the way it is. Like Baseball fans would love nothing more than to bag on baseball, which I think is the the most hilarious thing ever. Um, But Blackouts objectively suck, and they should be taken away forever. Mm. Uh, but the one thing I don't really get up in arms about is the fact that like people are always like, how can we not watch every spring training game? How can we not watch every spring training mm. game? Mm-hmm. This is a hot take, but there's there's a there's something about only getting to see your teams like seven times before opening day, and the rest of the time, it's for the sickos. The rest of the time, if you're mm. keeping up spring training, you are an absolute sicko. Too much of a good thing. Yeah, you it, know, too much hurt. baseball. And then, yeah. Okay. Interesting. But listen, okay. But listen, if you're listening, you're a sicko with me because I listen to the games. Then you're getting to enjoy that ambiance that, that, that you're getting to enjoy baseball in, in its, some of its purest form on the radio. Mm. Because mm. in the regular season, when was the last time that it, during a real regular season baseball game that you sat down and, and listened to it from inning one to inning nine and had to truly sit there, lock in and pay attention and keep up with the game that way? I don't know about you. That hardly happens in the regular season for me. It's maybe it's maybe listening to an inning or two to on my way to my, to my next destination, but it's never a full game where mm-hmm. I, the only concept of the game that I have is in my brain. And so there's something so refreshing about spending a month easing into baseball by only watching the team like seven times and then listening to them the rest of the 27 times, listening to them and and painting these mental pictures of what things mm-hmm. look like and using your mm-hmm. imagination and something so pure about that mm. something so transcendent about that to where if all the games became televised then it would then you would become spoiled again and then you would then you would lose the radio altogether i'll take it one step further rylan oh yeah that's right look all these people say oh i don't 
but I don't want to just listen to the game. I want to see the picture. You know what? How about you you do something else on the side? How about you do some work? How about you get back to the grind? You know, it's easier to get back to the grind if you're listening to the radio. You know, I grew up, you know, I'm, I'm from New Jersey, so basically every single motor vehicle that you are in, if there is a Yankees game on, you will hear John, John Sterling and Susan Waldman talking. And I remember like the trips down to my, um, when I would go visit my dad, that I would have to keep him awake sometimes because the guy was super old that I couldn't drive and all that. And I would be, we'd be talking, but sometimes rare, the rare times there'd be a Yankee game already on. So we'd listen to that the whole way through. I would always love it. There's something about it. There's something about you hear a little bit more of the crowd in a weird way. I don't know how to explain it, but you, I, I know that TV, you can hear the crowd, but there's something about like the, the, the crowd for a radio you hear, you, you have to paint the mental picture, like you said. And for those complaining, my thing is, look, it's spring training, man. And last year, y'all were throwing a fit over the lockout. I wasn't thrilled. I wasn't thrilled. Let me be clear. But I'm talking about fans. I'm not talking about employees. That really affected you, the lockout. I get that. That's different. But if you were just a fan and, oh, we missed the spring training games. Oh, no. It's Just agree to the deal that the billionaires want, players, because I missed my spring training games. Y'all are babies. Y'all are children. You're weak. And I think that radio is often a great kind of um, way to consume baseball. I've always thought that baseball is best consumed when you're doing something else too. That sounds like a diss, but it's not. It is the ultimate comforting background stuff to have on because it is always on. I can always appreciate it, especially when it's baseball season. Oh, well, the Padres aren't playing. Whatever. There's. Let's watch this. Uh, oh, a, a pitcher. That, that I like his pitching today. Oh, Corbin Burns is pretty good. Let's go watch that game. I just throw it on or put it on the radio, whatever. Just feel like you get some cool observations from that. You get a different type of version of things. And look, I mean, you can learn even more through the radio sometimes, you know? And I think some people, they just like to have it thrown in their face. Otherwise, it doesn't exist, you know? So that's what I say to people. Listen to the radio and get back on the grind and even play your video games on the side. Get better hobbies. How about that? Not everything has to be thrown in your face. You're like children who need a picture book in order to understand anything. It's yeah, unbelievable. That, that, that's that's a scathing review, and and I and I personally <laughs> I agree with it. I, I think that radio is the best vestibule of baseball, and 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 we should uh, enjoy it more, especially if you have a Hall of Fame radio broadcaster like the Royals do and Denny Matthews, and we'll see whenever he gets down to surprise. But like, look, it's awesome. Radio baseball is awesome, and the only exception. Is people like like pitcher list who like mm. have to go in there and watch pitches and die and di diagram where they're located at? Like, okay, the yeah, nerds, for you, yeah, the yeah for you, for you, you would need a video of like every pitcher. I, I get that. I get that. That's frustrating because you then you can't do your job uh, mm. uh, that you want to do. Um, but for like anyone else, even us, who has a job of talking about this team, you're just being annoying. You're just complaining to complain. Because if they gave you 27 spring training games, realistically, how many of them would you watch? Mm. Mm. But for those seven, you make a point to go watch them. Let's talk spring training. Um, Javi, my biggest spring training takeaway for the Kansas City Royals mm. is that Matt Duffy... Might be a piece. Might be a guy. Oh! Ooh, Matt Ooh, Duffy. He's saying Matt Duffy. Matt oh, Duffy. Not Danny Duffy. You mean Matt Duffy. Matt Duffy has Matt resurfaced Duffy. into Major League Baseball with the Kansas City Royals. My and even Lord. though Hunter is playing well in spring training, I think Matt Duffy might be a better option. I'm liking Matt Duffy. I'm liking that veteran presence, that veteran okay. swag he can bring as somebody who comes with Tampa experience as – uh, Matty Q does as well. Uh, I'm, I'm buying into Matt Duffy. That's like one of my biggest spring training takeaways so far. Interesting, because you know he's had a he's had a tough go of things. He was a rival. He was on my rival team, the Giants. He was actually finished second rookie of the year that one year. And I, I I remember people picked him up in fantasy. This was this was a guy that people were excited about. Didn't end up panning out, but I mean I'm I'm curious. Hey, look to give you a comp. Um, another former rookie that ended up flaming out a little bit. Uh, Nomar Mazzara for the Padres last year. As a fill-in guy, 
for a team that was trying to make the playoffs and everything and obviously lose to you know all the injuries and blah 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 blah. Like he was a a piece. He was a thing to throw out there that he kind of got some decent hits for the Padres. Not a great defender and all that. I'm not saying he was incredible, but he certainly wasn't some giant liability. And it was like, oh, all right, no Barbizarro. That was fun for like a month. Maybe that could happen for the Royals. You never know. And I appreciate that. And honestly, it'd be really fun if it, you had just a random breakout of Matt Duffy at age 32 or 31. I forgot which one. Um, that would be thrilling stuff. Um, I like it, man. It's a hot take, though. And you guys are known for your Duffies. You know, you, you love the Duffos. <laughs> you love the Duffos over there. Yeah, we're Duffy sickos. I mean, <laughs> that's what it is. That's what it is. But Rylan, you know who also can be sickos? People who who make wagers, you know? People who make a, a little bit of a bet every now and then. Can you tell me where those people go to? Capital J journalist Javier Reyes. They go to fanduel.com slash locked on. Man, that's where they go. Fanduel.com slash locked on. Let me tell you something, folks. March Madness is happening this week. Best place to go to bet on the money line, on the point spread, on the prop bets is over there at fanduel.com slash locked on. Because if you're a new customer, that's awesome. You get a no sweat first bet, which is a thousand dollars back. That's bonus bets back if you do not win your first bet. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, the number one sportsbook in America. It's safe, secure, super easy to use. Then they can bet on anything that you would want to bet on. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine bets for a chance to win bigger payouts with the same game parlay. So do not miss your chance at no sweat first bet. To one, up to $1,000 in bets back when you go to Fender.com slash locked on. That's Fender.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the ex official betting partner of the NBA. Javi, we can go there right now and we can see that there are some NCAA March Madness games to bet on. Mm. Like tonight's game, Pittsburgh, Mississippi State. Free money, free winner, Pittsburgh plus two and a half. I don't know how they're the underdog. Let's go Pittsburgh. Uh, lock it in. Plus two and a half over there at FanDuel.com uh, slash locked on. And we're Hobby, back. Everybody. We're back. <laughs> I guess, okay, never mind, Javi. You're the, you're, you're the conductor. <laughs> well, you're the well conductor sorry. Apparently, I was the one who had to come in and be like, hold up just a second. We got to talk about FanDuel. <laughs> apparently, I'm the one. Okay, you know, well, I am the captain back. now, as they we're say. We're back. Javi, tell us about your Padres takeaway. My Padres takeaway so far for now is the same kind of thing that has been the only real question for the Padres, in my opinion, for a while. Uh, I think that, don't get me wrong, there are some questions for the season. Uh, we have to wonder, oh, how will these guys play in their new positions? But we know Juan Soto is going to play. We know Grisham is going to play. And obviously, yeah, everyone's wondering how Tatis will look in the outfield. I personally think that's spring training. He's made, you know, he made one kind of nice sliding catch and had one error. It might be disaster, it might not be. I don't know. But for me, the one thing that we can garner from at least spring training that doesn't require regular season games being played is the whole issue with the back of the rotation for the, for the Padres. Um, they kind of notably signed Nick Martinez and Seth Lugo. Everybody knows that to be potentially the fifth and sixth starters. And that was a little scary because everyone was like, well, or fourth and fifth starters, I should say. And that was a little scary because everyone's like, well, Seth Lugo, and why, why are you staring at me all freakishly? Like he's really folks. Rylan is hanging on every word to hear about the Padres rotation right now. Um, that, uh, they, that the, the, both of those guys don't have the best resume when it comes to being starters, especially Lugo, despite being a fellow Puerto Rican. Um, you know, we, we just don't have much evidence there. So they signed Michael Waka to kind of bolster that rotation. And now we're wondering who's going to be that fifth spot and potentially sixth spot if they do a six man rotation, which they still, according to reports, is something they want to do. Rylan, why are you raising your hand like that? No, continue. Finish your point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, as of late, it's looked like Jay Groom might be the guy. Um, for those unfamiliar, and also I recommend everyone check out the um, – Dennis Lynn did, did a nice little like kind of spring training update over at the, at the Athletic about all this stuff. But Jay Groom brought over from the Eric Hosmer trade – God <laughs> We can't escape him no matter what we do. Uh, brought over from the Eric Hosmer trade. And, you know, not necessarily this highly touted super prospect, but he comes over – and in AAA El Paso last year, 3.16 ERA and 10 starts, had like a decent showing and 
you know, he's not necessarily going to be a superstar pitcher. That's not what I'm saying, but he's been competing for this last spot. And his velocity has had, had an uptick a little bit, about two miles per hour um, that we've seen. And he's looked pretty good in spring training. While the other folks, Julio Tehran, who he was good once upon a time, right? Ryan Weathers, um, Reese Neer, guys like that, haven't really developed all that much. And the other thing is, AJ Monahone, my beloved, the AJ, the Monahone Hive. I know every, I know there are some of you out there. If you're still with me, I'm sorry. Oh, look, he drew the Hosmer on the coffee mug. Look at that. That was good. I like that. I'm screenshotting that for sure. Um, that the Morhone Hive were, were, were suffering right now. Uh, don't know any results on the MRI, but with that, and also considering that Morhone hasn't looked that good this spring, it's looking like it's going to be Jay Groom. At least at the beginning, he, they've said that they might use him as like a long inning reliever. That makes sense. I think the Padres are like, whatever. This fifth spot is just going to be whatever reliever we feel like it with the exception of probably like your Pomeranz, your Robert Suarez and your Josh Hader. Those guys are just going to be your shutdown relievers. Everybody else. I feel like they're like, sure. Martinez might pitch. He might be a long inning reliever, whatever. So that's the big update for now is that it looks like it's going to be Jay Groom and he's looked impressive this spring. And I would love nothing more than for the Padres to actually have received something back in the Eric Hosmer trade away deal, which would be one of the great plot twists ever for a team that, just a year ago, it looked like they would have to give up a big prospect in order to get rid of him. And instead, they might get somebody back. We'll see. And also mentioned the article, first 24, they play 24 games in 25 days. So it's possible that re- whether it's doing well or not, that uh, they're going to want to use Jay Groom or at least experiment with him. So that's the big update for now. And I have to tell you, Ryland, this Hosmer coffee mug is one of your best bits yet. I have to say, it's great. It's really great. Everybody watch the YouTube. It's fantastic. Okay, Javi. I'm, I was I was I was just blown away by your Padres starting pitching talk. It was riveting. It was <laughs> riveting stuff. <laughs> it was riveting stuff. But I have I have breaking news to share with you. Yeah. During your diatribe of the fifth and sixth starter of the Padres. <laughs> What happened? The LA Chargers have granted Austin Eckler permission to seek a trade. Why are you roasting my team? Oh, because you're trying to get bonus points for the Padres fans. That's what you're doing right now. Okay. Doesn't that hurt okay. you at all? Also, yeah. Your Chargers have. Well, they were. It was rumored yesterday. No, this anyway. is from Shefty. So it's like, like, not official. like surprising. Shefty official. Okay. But still, you know, this is what kind of person Rylan is. He knows that I am still a Chargers fan, but he knows I'm going to ingratiate myself with the Padres fans that are listening to this show by making fun of this team. And in fairness, it's a brilliant play by you. It's a brilliant play. It's not a sicko play. It's just brilliant. Mastermind Tyrion Lannister type of play by you. I, I really must give you credit. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it stinks. I love Austin Eckler. Just look up Austin Eckler dance um, on TikTok, and it's just good vibes. Uh, so I love that dude. Um, we'll see how it goes down in the future and i'm looking forward to when we probably end up literally fighting um next year when it comes to football takes because you've already tried slandering my team a lot out here um well there's not much the unfortunate part because you're the unfortunate part is the time yeah the thing that you slandered them for was true that's the problem and it sent me into a i went on sabbatical for a few days i didn't respond to anybody's texts um after that playoff game i did it like it's it's a whole thing i just took a break from my phone yeah, um, I, I didn't either after the Chiefs won a Super Bowl. I was just too over the moon to reply to text, but I, I know you don't understand that feeling at all. Now, um, Javi, you know what is sicko behavior? Like what truly is sicko behavior? Us recording these podcasts every week? Yes, but besides that. What is it? Lay the reaction me. to Brady Singer in the World Baseball Classic has been disgusting. Yes. Anyone who no, is criticizing and crucifying Brady Singer should be locked up in jail with the <laughs> key thrown away for six months. Let me tell you something. First things first, Brady Singer, not a reliever, folks. Don't know if you know that because you don't watch Kansas City Royals baseball. Not a reliever. So to put him in the game out of the bullpen, stupid. And and by the way, how in the heck did Mark DeRosa become the manager? This dude was fine on on. Good morning, baseball on MLB Network. He's not a skip, okay? Not a skipper. Second thing, second, okay? This is a young guy in his first ever WBC, in his first ever professional playoff-like environment, and it didn't go well. 
that's okay. Third thing, third, I'm not going to bash any pitcher, no matter how bad they perform for USA this year, for actually being there and pitching. Because you know who isn't pitching? Garrett Cole. Yeah. You know who isn't pitching? Any other side of caliber arm. Dylan Cease, Max Scherzer, all these alleged stars. Where are they then? Uh, oh, well, guess what? Oh. If those guys were pitching, you wouldn't worry about Brady Singer right now. You wouldn't. Mm. So mm. don't blame Brady Singer for being the one that stepped up. Don't bre- don't blame Brady Singer for being the one who came and carried the flag for the United States. Blame mm. these 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 uppity millionaires like Garrett Cole mm. who were like, oh, ahead, oh heavens no, I can't play in two more days. <laughs> heavens no. I've got to get prepared for the Yankee season, which will inevitably end in a, in a wild card loss to the Cleveland Guardians. I can't. I can't go to the WPC. Uh, divisional loss to the Astros. Let's be fair. They they usually make it past at least the first round. But go ahead. The point being, people like Garrett Cole not pitching led to Brady Singer pitching. So no matter how good or bad he did, Brady Singer could have used that same BS excuse. But you know what he did? He got up early in the middle of December and started preparing for the MLB season. That way he could be ramped up enough to pitch in the World Baseball Classic. He put in the work to get to this point. You know who didn't do that? All your other little favorite spider tack using pitchers. Okay. Oh, so go ahead. They now. can go kick rocks, and the people who are criticizing Brady Singer can go kick rocks. And you know what? Team USA is going to rally. And you know what? The next time Brady Singer steps on that bump for Team USA, he's going to shove less than three hits allowed and no and no runs given up. I guarantee it. Go Brady Singer and go USA. That was an, a passionate – that reinvigorated my love for baseball right there. It's as someone who doesn't care about USA. Not doesn't care, but is it? that's not my number one. I'm rooting for Team Puerto Rico, of course. That was art, art, Rylan. That was art. That got me emblazoned with passion because it is a good point. A big discourse that's happened over the last week or so is like, how is USA getting killed and this and that? It's like, well, in fairness – Give Garrett Cole a break for one second. Dylan Cease, Aaron Nola, Justin Verlander, Max Freed, Alec Manoa, Carlos Rodon, Max Scherzer, Zach Allen, Zach Wheeler, Logan Webb. None of them. I just listed to you all the, the F4 leaders of last year, or at least the war leaders, according to baseball reference, among starting pitchers that could have pitched for Team USA, and they didn't. And I know, whoa, whoa, whoa it's because managers are scared they'll, that they'll get hurt. Bro, bro. The Yankees just lost like six players in spring training stuff. Guys are going to get hurt. I don't understand this idea that the World Baseball Classic will somehow that the yes, they're trying a little bit more and they're going to play a little bit more. But the idea that you can't you can only get hurt there. The Los Angeles Dodgers just lost a shortstop for the whole year in a spring training game. So the like it's not like this is after the season, right? Because if it's after the season, it's like, oh, no, like we're going to miss time with our with our guy to start the year. No, it's like this guy got hurt in a in an exhibition spring training game, you know? And I just think that this idea that the World Baseball Classic, because guys are trying more, results mean that they're going to have more injuries. They put a pitch limit on these guys anyway, you know? Like, th- there's plenty of guys. I mean, like, especially for major league players, they're making sure, you know, Sandy Alcantara isn't going out there and throwing six innings. They know that. It's kind of being treated the same way that they would use spring training stuff. So you're giving them reps and dare I say even more reps that might even matter a little bit more because you're facing high leverage situations. Maybe that's a good thing. We don't know. And I hate this cherry picking thing that people do where they'll only look at like the one time someone got hurt. This this has been a beef of mine for the home run derby, right? Where everyone always brings up, well, there's a home run derby curse. Look how bad this guy was after the all-star break. Yeah, well, look at all the guys who were bad that weren't. In the home run derby that were bad after the all star break. Mark Trumbo, for example, shout to that dude, biggest second half choke job player of all time. And you, you have players like that. And now I'm getting a little bit lost, uh, going a little bit of a tangent, but bottom line is that's that was my reaction to it is that the United States um, is full of a bunch of cowards. Um, and I think that they should be getting all that mad at Brady Singer. Was it fun for me watching him get lit up a tiny bit only because I knew what this guy was thinking? I was thinking the entire time, like, he was like, hey, man, Royals fan, we get to be excited that our guy, you know, we get to see Bobby Witt, we get to see Vinny P, MJ Melendez for Team Puerto Rico, we get to see some of our guys, we get to see Brady Singer for the USA, and he goes out and gets torched, and I agree, I think that 
um, more, more of a blame should be put on the fact that for whatever reason, all these cowards um, for the American players uh, aren't pitching for TBSA. The lineup is there, but the pitchers aren't. And you could maybe make an excuse for Verlander and Scherzer because they're old as hell. But these other guys, it's like, I don't know, man. Sounds like cowardice to me. <laughs> it, it smells like cowardice to me. And I uh, think that that's what should be said. And I also thought that was a little bit mean that people were torching that 19 year old that got lit up by the USA lineup. It's like he's 19 and he's facing an all-star lineup of major league players. Leave the kid alone. Who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like that I, was I just, ridiculous. It's just, I think people should be careful also not to use the WBC as an indictment fully of players. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, well, there have been guys that have, haven't performed well in this thing that have been great. Marcus Stroman, who I hate for the record. He is pitching for Team Puerto Rico, but I hate this guy, and I don't really feel like I need to mince words about that. Uh, do not like Marcus Stroman. He was the MVP of Team USA. He's not the best pitcher in baseball, though. You know what I mean? Like, not even close. He's not even in the top, like, 40 at this point. But that's what happened. So you can't use that as an indictment. The same way sometimes you can't use playoff baseball as an indictment on a player's overall value. And I got into way too much of a tangent, so save me. Uh, Rylan, please. I do I do want to apologize for taking out Mark DeRosa. He didn't deserve that. His show was really good on the movie network. He's a very entertaining guy. Um, <laughs> he's just not a manager, and that's okay. He doesn't need to be a manager. I'm not a manager either. Um, and, and and Mark, you know, you're a good looking guy, you're a you're a good, good spoken, well spoken guy, very entertaining guy. Um, and, and you know, for all I know, you could be a really good manager one day. So uh, keep pursuing your dreams, buddy. Uh, but I do apologize for taking out Mark DeRosa in my in my heated uh diatribe on Brady Singer. But I got to protect my my favorite pitcher. Absolutely. Absolutely. And everybody, Team Puerto Rico, vamos! A perfect game. Have you ever seen that round? It wasn't a perfect game. game. It wasn't a perfect game. It, it was a perfect game. game. It, was it, was a perfect game. Oh, it was beautiful. It was, it was gorgeous. Did not go gorgeous. 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 It did not go gorgeous. Gorgeous. Look, at, look at Jeff Passon's tweet. Look at Jeff Passon's tweet. Not a perfect game. Uh, well, it was a perfect game, so uh, I don't care. Can we talk about Team Italy for a second? Vinny P, Nicky Lopez. Next round, here we come. Yeah, Team Italy, kind of one of the surprises of the tournament so far for a lot of people. Very cool. Shout out to Team Italy. I, I've enjoyed that. Puerto Rico, not surprising, really. Even even in a year where it's not the best roster they've ever had, they're still one of the like five S-tier countries slash teams, I should say, not countries in the case of Puerto Rico, uh, like out there, right? Um, and then you've got Japan, who is continually underrated, by the way, by American media. Just going to throw it out there every year. They've won twice. You know what I mean? Like, the, yeah, I bet a lot of people don't realize the Dominican Republic has won once, I believe. USA has won once, I believe. Dominic, Team Japan is always in it, and they've won twice. So I just want to throw it out there that, guys, they're they're going to whoop butt. And I cannot wait for the farther they go because we get Otani stuff. So that should be fun. When the moon hits the sky like a big they pizza pie. pie. Come on, hey. Come on, hey. I'm a big Team Italy guy now. They had the espresso machine in the locker room or in the club or in the uh, dugout. Big guy. Uh, coming up, we'll talk about our biggest spring training misses. We're back on the Lockdown Royals Padres crossover. And uh, Javi, I want to tell you right now to go check out Locked on fantasy baseball. They're going to help you win your league over there. And Venezuela just had a bases clearing single to score a couple of runs. And uh, it's now three to one Venezuela. But Javi, what is your biggest spring training with? Hmm. As we close out this show, honestly, a lot later than I probably thought we were going to. I wonder whose fault that is. Um, I don't know. Maybe I the guy that spent 10 minutes talking about the fifth and sixth start of the Padres? No. Oh, how did you brought up Austin Eckler? That's, that's even baseball. It's, it's your fault. What are you talking about? I think so. In my tenure as the Padres um, Lord, I'm going to call myself. Um, I don't think I've had too many disastrous takes um, on spring training stuff, but I have had some takes that I made around spring training. Um, that I used spring training stats to kind of enforce. I already believed it and whatnot. So I'm not saying I was like a, a Greg Bird thing, right? Greg Bird is one of the most famous like spring training darlings. The guy was hitting like 570, came to the Yankees and was like sent down to the minors. He was so bad, 
right? That's a famous one. And it is basically out of the league at this point. Um, I do think that I have two in my tenure for the Padres that maybe can qualify for this. Number one, Taylor Trammell, former prospect for the Padres. He got tossed around a whole bunch. He was acquired in a trade, like a three-team trade back in the day with the with the Reds and somebody else, I believe. Um, I don't have it right in front of me. And I thought he was going to be good because I thought that the athleticism and everything – was going to translate and that if he could just hit a little bit, that he would be like a essentially what Trent Grisham is right now for the Padres at, at worst, maybe with a little bit less power and a little bit more speed. I thought that's what Taylor Chamel was going to be. And I thought that I was excited because it'd been a while since the Padres had some potential good defense for an outfielder, especially in center field. Go look up Padres center fielders over the last decade. Not great. Not great. Uh, like older past his prime, Justin Upton might be the best that they've had, right? So they haven't always had the best stuff there. So I was dead wrong about Taylor Trammell. He ends up getting dealt, I believe, in the... I'm going to say, what trade was it that we did? Was it the Mitch Moreland trade, maybe? I don't remember exactly. But it was in 2020. He never really got to play. And he barely plays right now, unfortunately, despite seeming like the greatest guy, by the way. Go look up interviews with him. He's might be a sneaky like media guy uh, in a few years. So keep an eye on that, uh, Taylor Trammell. So that's one. And I also, my most infamous Locked On Now, uh, this was back during my Joker era, uh, back when I really used to ham it up in these videos. And I still ham it up every now and then. I put on my glasses. <laughs> they told us, in fairness to me, they said bold predictions. <laughs> That's what they said, bold. I wasn't going to log on to this app and say, Fernando Tatis Jr. will win the MVP. Uh, Blake Snell will win the Cy Young. No, no, no. It was in 2021. I said Trent Grisham would finish top 10 at MVP voting. I was completely wrong. It was a disaster. And now he stinks. I slightly redeemed myself because a lot of people thought I was being overly tough on him. But no, no, no. Trent Grisham was just not going to be good heading into last season. Maybe could be better this year. But those are probably my worst takes uh, on the Padres. And in general, like random one, I thought Michael Fraco was going to be basic back in the day. Um, I totally bought it to him. Um, I know he was on, a, at the, on the Royals, I believe, at some point. Um, that didn't end up happening. I believed in Tyson Ross for a while. Everybody believed in Andrew Kashner. So there's been plenty uh, over the years that I can't recall all of them. It's kind of hard to remember all of them. But uh, yeah, that's the, those are definitely probably my Padres ones that are the most infamous, I'd say. I only have one massive spring training whiff. One, mm. but it was a big one. It was oh, a big no. one. Oh, no. And I wish I could find somewhere that had databases of spring training stats for guys like this that like yeah. did not play in the big leagues. Peter O'Brien, do you know who that is? Mm -mm. He he was in Kansas City Royals camp. And I am not kidding you. He hit a home run for like 17 straight days. Like he had like 20 <laughs> Spring training home runs in one spring training. <laughs> and like people were legitimately like, like happy. And like people like legitimately were like thinking that he was like a part of the future, just out of nowhere, just came out of nowhere to hit home runs and to be a great DH. And and, and he's so amazing and he's so awesome. And, you know, he had some pedigree I mean, he was picked in the third round by the Rockies uh, out of high school, then went to college and was picked in the second round by the, by the Yankees uh, and then wound up in Kansas city. Uh, through the grapevine, he's only 32 years old right now. Like, uh, but when he was up there hitting home runs and people, it, it became a phenomenon, like a spring training phenomenon, which was very hard to do. And uh, well, he never played for Kansas City in, in the regular season, and his major league career lasted 72 games, where he was most impactful for uh, the Marlins for a couple of seasons. Uh, and his uh, career home runs in the big leagues, 11. Less than that one uh, spring training. So uh, I just, I was all in. I, I couldn't comprehend that, like, you would be able to hit a ton of home runs because of the heat, because of the high air, because of the uh, spring training nature of, of the game, also. Uh, and it wouldn't translate to like real life baseball. I just could, that, my little, my young self, I was in like middle school or like early, early high school. Mm. I couldn't understand why that wouldn't translate to like, to, real real baseball and i just thought he was going to be incredible i thought it was going to be barry bonds and uh and he wasn't so javi thank you for joining me again next week we'll have a lot to talk about because i want to give you the opportunity mm. 
to stake your claim mm-hmm. as WBC champion mm-hmm. of the world. And hopefully we'll get in a, in, in a Team Italy and Team um, Puerto Rico matchup. That would be fun. I don't know if that can even happen, but it'd be fun if we do get that to happen. Uh, because I'm all in on Team Italy. I'm, I'm an Italian for this for this month. So, <laughs> Javi, thank you for joining us. And, and thank you for allowing me to join you because this is a crossover episode. What is this, a crossover episode? Uh, Javi, I tried it again. It didn't work. But uh, anything else to close the show? Not much, man. I feel you on the Italian thing. I will be an Italian starting April when the Mario movie comes out. But for now, full fledged Puerto Rico, perfect game, never been done before, and don't sleep on them. They're a powerhouse of baseball for a reason, and I can't wait to see how things transpire because we really are like right there. I know, I know it doesn't feel like it because of the WBC. I think is kind of clouding it for some reason because that's such a big tournament to have like before a regular season, but. It's right there. It's right there, man. 15 days. I can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, to put into perspective how right there we are, like by the time March Madness ends and you finish watching your Jayhawks go on this massive run to the to the title again and wing it again, we're gonna we're gonna do it. Uh, it'll be time for baseball. Uh, right right then. So uh, Javi, thanks again. 